Hi hey everyone, we're back. Season four, dude. I know, mate. Go Ever enforcer and the dude. Real bloody good to be back. You don't even look yeah. older, mate. Don't I? Your hair's not even changing colour. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Jeez, you give me some stick. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the new maybe, enforcer hair dye to come out. Maybe a new product? <laughs> yeah. Could be a good line. It would be, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So you Can't put it in. Dyes your hair and you get a bad attitude. <laughs> <laughs> in one hit. What more could you want? <laughs> oh, good to me, mate. I've got the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got attitude? Sometimes, mate. I'm yeah. trying to fix that. <laughs> sometimes it still comes out. How's that medication going? Is it all right? I'm, I'm off that. <laughs> all right. No, this, seriously, it's good to uh, it's good to be back. And uh, yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna mix it up because now a good thing about it, I mean we last year we were a bit restricted to within Queensland because we couldn't travel. And you had um, a bit on. And had a little bit on, yeah, did yeah. a bit of randy, randy, racy stuff. Yeah. Uh, but this year we're going to uh, get out on the road a little bit more as well, which would be cool. So I've uh, got a few things planned coming up. For, uh, something a bit different as well, and uh, looking at the revision mirror a bit. Like the stuff we did with LP and... Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of cool characters out there. There is. There's a lot of cool characters, cool cars, and we're going to track them down and find them, I think. I think that's, that's going to be this season's Ripper. goal i think so uh we're going to rip straight into it ton of racing ton of racing has been been on the cards which has been really good i've been glued to the tv every weekend watching something or something or other with moto gp and f1 uh tcrs on the on the weekend it was actually that was actually pretty good pretty good racing on Sweet, the weekend yeah. um supercars have been been back on as well bit going on there so in order so in order of they rolled out this year supercars um, not going to talk about the racing at all. Most people that have tuned into the show have probably seen it, know who won, uh, know who got the champagne. Probably roll a bit more into some of the things we get asked about, dude. And, and that's what we like to do, answer questions what we get asked. Sure. In the street. Yep. Uh, two biggest things are new owners of the sport. Yep. Uh, has there been any change or whatever? The next thing is Gen 3. Man, people ask me about this Gen 3 car, you know, which shows, I think, a little bit that people are very confused about what it is, where it is, how long it, before it actually, when's it going to race? People still don't know when it's going to race. Well, we know when you it's know, supposed so. to race. Yeah, yeah, well, true. Yeah. But that, that message isn't still making out to the Joe average. Okay. I, think, I think only within the source. So let's start with that. Let's start with Gen 3. Yep. Um, you've, you've got a fair bit of inside information within that. Obviously, you can't reveal who, where, or why, or how. But yeah, what, what's your read on what's going on with that? Because there's been uh, reports about the ergonomics of it. Drivers, <laughs> and, and I could see this one coming, not fitting when they do fit in the car. Drivers getting numb legs because of the, I think, the angle. Of, of now they've put a pedal box in it, the angle of legs actually sticking up instead of going down like a Yeah, car. it's more like a um, Formula One car raised leg height, which is fine when you're lying down, but you're right, the ergo is a big, big shift to what the drivers are used to. And I, I, I think um, you know, most cars you get into as a driver, whereas a GT car or a NASCAR, you've driven a NASCAR, different cut, you get in there and you sit in it and you go, well, I can make this work. You know, I might need a bit of padding here. I might need a bit of padding that. But the Gen 3 car, from, from what I can work out, talking to the guys that have driven it, it's a big shift to what they're used mm. to. Um, and obviously you've got some different size guys in there as well. So to get everyone in there and get it comfortable, that, you know, it's come to the point where they finally realise they've got to stop. They've had to make some modifications and cut the car up and try and get some... Get uh, some what do you mean cut the car up? Well, they've had to move the firewall further forward, basically, get so the drivers can straighten their legs out and then try and get them a bit more room so they can tilt the back of the seat back from what I can gather. Have they already made? Didn't they yeah, have so the they've chassis already on. made? Yeah, there is chassis made. I think Pace have made 16, started making 16 chassis. I asked the 888 guys, they said they didn't have that many made, but they were had made some. Uh, teams have put deposits, obviously, probably the Ford guys over at Pace and the 888 customers at 888. So they've had to stop that, put that on hold till they refine all this. So you know, it just puts them more and more behind time. And when you, you know, you can buy time with money, mm. but you know, that this car just keeps getting further and further behind. And it, it's, you know, the, to me, that car was meant to be inexpensive, capital cost, cheaper to run, 
and put value back into the team. So it's not ticking that box for me at the moment. Could you see it coming? That, that I, think, I think oh, it can, oh. mate. Look, look, we built cars here yeah. and I've <laughs> built race cars and you just have a small group of people and you just get on with it and solve problems. And to me, this car is a car by committee. <laughs> You know, yeah, it so goes to back to supercars and obviously it was off track and I think Triple Eight grabbed it and pulled it back together. Then, you know, the, you've got the Ford homologation team in DJR, they want different things. So, yeah, it, it's, it's just taken a long time. It looks bureaucratic. Um, they're going to have supply chain issues now, for sure, because everyone in the world has. Mm. So you're going to have to, you know, get wheels and there might even be a shortage of tubing around to build the thing. So it's it's... Yeah, I think they're in for a bit of choppy water. The unfortunate part about it is it, 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 some of it seemed fairly logical because I remember last year when I first saw the chassis at Triple Eight um, when the wild card uh, announcement was made and I went down yep. to Triple Eight, it was sitting in the corner and I, the chassis there didn't have a front or rear clip on it so, so I rolled down there and had a snoop around and first thing, first thing that came to mind just looking at it, I went, how's the driver going to fit in this thing? First, first thing, thing you do is do. grab the seat and put the driver in. <laughs> first thing, gonna you, work, you're mate. dead right. Put a seat, I steering remember box. we first put the Larry bar in the car. It was like, yeah. and, we're going to look over it or under it. You and know? anyone out there that's watching this show that builds hot rod cars or anything, you know, they're, yep. they're building, you know, retro mods or, you know, you know, they, first thing you do, you put a seat in, you're steering column, and you go, yep, okay, sit there, uh, and then build everything around that. Because unless you can fit in the damn thing, it's not much good having it. So I, I, I just think they got it the wrong way around, built the chassis and then went, oh, geez, maybe we can't fit a driver in it. This is a bit of an issue. Yeah, I think they would have known that early because one of the, oh, tallest, not. One of the tallest drivers in-house where the car was designed, basically, mm -hmm. at Triple Eight. So, you know, maybe, and a lot of these things, you sit in it and they probably just think, oh, once he drives it, it'll be okay. He's just got to get used to it. But Too far too far removed yeah no. anyway it's happened it's a problem yeah yeah, yeah. they've recognized it pretty late in the game the thing that you know you, you're going to have chopped up cars yeah to get going so what's what are the teams going to do what, someone's going to have one that's been chopped up and a new one there'll be there'll be cars that'll be chopped and remodified mm -hmm. you know what drivers are like <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I want the new oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I want yeah. the new chassis and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my car's been chopped up is that going to be good you know what they're like yeah, 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 you yeah, had yeah. to I always gave well. you a new car over here because <laughs> yeah. I knew it was yeah. good for your head mate <laughs> yeah. and that's probably all it was yeah. <laughs> that's probably all it was a bit of this yeah. going on alright so that's, that's that that's part that. that, that's so, that part of it Let's, we'll, we'll barrel away from that and obviously, they've got to get it done oh, but, um, yeah. it's just I just think, as an overall view, and I know we spoke about this last year, yep. with, with the whole thing, I just feel there's been so much focus on, on, on the car. And now we have a, a new owners that have just rolled into town. Um, and it doesn't seem a hell of a lot of change that we've seen so far, not what, what I've seen. I haven't seen any wholesale changes. Same people in the same places. Some have been elevated, some haven't, Yeah. you know, but probably the same. So I haven't seen a great deal of change, but, you know, there's, it just seems so much spotlight on the car when, when I believe there's, you know, from a punter's point of view, there's other things that need to be worked on, you know, and obviously they're having issues with events at the moment, some out of their control as well um, but you know they seem to have forgot about what's going to be entertaining there's so much focus on that i think they're hinging so much on this damn car that that's going to fix all the problems it's, it's not it's not they don't. and for me and i'll put it really simple gen 3 was about putting value back into the teams yeah that car should be capital cost should be lower the operational cost should be lower less people put value back into the teams where the teams mm. can make money and run a business. And then that concept just been, it got hijacked to, for the new TV deal. It got hijacked as a tool to sell the business. So Gen 3 has become all this fluffiness, you know, even the fact that they take them around to all the tracks and demonstrate them. And so the fans can see them and the, you know, put drivers in them. I would would have put that in another, another department, had a test team going and making sure that the, the car's right first. So. Uh, I, I think there's a good point. At the end of the day, you need to, we need to go to a new car, but we still had 35, 40,000 people at Oran Park when we drove Ford Sierras. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you couldn't buy one of them here in Australia. So, yeah. 
you know, if the if the fans know who the drivers are, the, the drivers speak their mind, you get rivalries, you get all that, mm. you're right. The car is, is, doesn't really matter, does it? No, no, not at all. Not at all. It's just as long the, as the teams can operate. Yeah, it. It, the car is the tool for the entertainment. Yeah, that's all it is. But if you if you're not if you're making that tool isn't going to achieve anything from what it is now with the cars they have now, the entertainment value is not going to be any better, and they're no cheaper to run. You're just moving sideways. You're not moving forward. And like I said, there's so much focus on that when there should be focus on what well, what do the fans want? What's going to bring the fans back? And it's just, look, it's not me. You can't get away from facts, right? We don't yep. always get the facts right on this show over the four seasons we've been. But we, we've got a pretty good strike rate. But at the end of the day, you can't, you can't hide from uh, Saturday the 5th of March. Here's the TV. Free to wear. So free to wear. And this is, this is a perfect storm. This is no AFL, no, no other sports uh, was going on that yep. day, S- a Saturday there. night, perfect, people were home, having a barbecue, having a beer, I think I watched the motor racing, you know, it, every, this is a perfect scenario for to get big numbers. In total, total TV audience, on free to air only, all right, was 248,000, peak number, peak audience. But when you break that down into Metro, Metro was only 133,000, it was 109,000 in regional. Shows you how strong regional is, but the regional aren't the ones that go to the everyday tracks you yep. know, when they're in town. It's normally the metro. The metro is very weak at 133,000. That's why they're not getting the numbers to the circuit is because your metro areas seem to have tuned out. Yeah. You know, so they, they I mean, 248,000, I mean, really, when you break that down into some, uh, into the states, you know, it could be 50, 60, 70,000 in each state. You know, that's a pretty small number. Pretty and small number. But I, it, it's, it's, I think and, and, and your the, point. And these, are, and these are facts. So what I'm getting at is, is that's, that's the issue, is getting, getting these people back. Getting these people back is about finding out what the fans want, uh, making the sport more entertaining. And to make it more entertaining, they want to see a contest. And a, and a contest means what you just said, rivalries, bit of you know, bit of smash up on the track. Well, personalities. And, you know, personalities. And the yep. the test there, and everyone's talking about it, how popular Formula One is because of Drive to Survive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they sh- show people in their natural habitat. Yes. Yeah, and w- yeah, and and our drivers are that worried about being good corporate citizens. Yeah. They don't speak their mind. You've got a few few cases where. Chaz is his own sort of guy, and mm. people love him for it. But yeah, everyone yeah. else is, and, and that's the thing. Like at Bathurst, uh, I think Will it was. I, was I think it was. Sat- like I think it was Saturday morning. Yeah. You know, I, I sort of was kicking back. I had a coffee. You know, watching all everyone come in in the morning. A fair few punters around the pits at that stage. You know, because crowd was starting to gather. I'm sitting back watching it, and I, I was just doing a bit of crowd gazing. Right, drivers are walking in. Right, I reckon 75 percent of the drivers walk past. You know, and the team get didn't get pulled up once for an autograph or right you know then uh, then there was a Chaz Mostert or even you know like, like a Craig Lowndes a Garth Tander you know all that sort of you know they got flooded yeah you know Shane Jamie Winkup you know so uh, that's and to me I was looking at it and going you know there's your problem there's your problem is no one knows who who a lot of the other drivers even are they're not recognizable so they, they've got to turn that <laughs> You know, that's the next generation of drivers coming up. They've got to make them, but the drivers have got to help themselves too. The teams have got to do their job in promoting their drivers. Yep. Um, everyone's got a, a stake in this and not just let it just roll along and think it's going to, you know, it's yeah, just they're, they're self They're definitely concerned about towing the, the corporate line and getting back to Gen 3. It's, it's obviously the, the thing's not right. Mm. But none of the drivers have come out publicly, and they've, they've kept, done a good job of keeping that all in house. Well, Shane has. I see Shane come out. Well, not much. Normally, he's yeah, he's been yeah, censored, you know. Well, he said he said it, it's it's too it's not hard enough to drive. Yeah. He said it doesn't roll enough and doesn't you know it, it's not it's there's not enough theatre in it you know. Yeah. For lack of yeah, better he words. Did say that, yeah. So I mean, so he has come out and had a bit of a run. Good on him. For yeah, good that. on him. Good on him. You know, but um, that's what I mean. So much focus on one thing that I don't think it's, 
you know, there, there's a lot more to it. And, and I sh I'll tell you another number which, which really surprised me and adds to my argument of, of they've, got a, they've got to look in the revision mirror a bit and go, what, why was it so successful in the early days? And, and why have we lost the fan base where it is now? Because in my opinion, and, and, all, and all of this is just our opinions, but we like to think we're fairly well credentialed, we can make an opinions on it. Sure. Um, is that, um, you know, net, net soft timing. Yep. So you can jump on, anyone doesn't know, you go to Nat Stoff Race Results, brings Works up all, all uh, fantastic website, like it goes up all, all of, of any racing, whether it be clubby, uh, I think the only thing they don't do is speedway, but anything that's it's clubby all related, everything, and, uh, all shows your times, results, everything is there. And it had, had viewers, it has what well, shows you the view, you know, how many, how many people views? clicked on that particular on event on yep. the live timing. So that event, so very event specific, and what day. So um, for the supercars round, uh, Sydney Motorsport Park, uh, it was, uh, this was the 6th of March, uh, was 38,900 physical people clicked on, right? Watching live you know, timing. Watching <laughs> live timing, okay, you think, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Okay, here's the kicker. Uh, the Phillip Island Classic Festival of Motorsport is 30th of March, where they had all the whole historic Larry's out there having a run around. Yeah. You know, they had some of the old HRT cars. Yeah, I know it, was a, it was a classic event, right? Yeah, 50, historic road race. 56,319. Yeah, well, that's. Click, clicked on that to view the result. But this, this is just, and these, these are all race type people. Yeah, are. there's obviously plenty of people trying to see what their mates doing because there's plenty of cars yeah, entered yeah, in that event. Yeah, but also a lot of interest from the public to go say, oh, I wonder how Larry's going, you know, and... Yeah, well, I did. Yeah. I would have clicked on it. Yeah, so that's 56,000. I clicked 000. on it a few times to see what was happening. And then you had the Shannon's uh, Motorsport Australian Championship at Phillip Island um, the other weekend, right? 52,585. So you actually had more people click onto that than you did for the Sydney Supercar Night Race. Yeah. So well, I think it, that's it, directly the amount of categories, that amount of cars entered for the event. There's a lot of cars entered there, and the only way you can really follow it is on the live time. Yeah, but that was yeah. on, that was, anyway, that yeah, was, that was live as well, but numbers are numbers. Okay. You know, so you can't, can't oh, but, but again, I think they're the sort of things you'd be looking at as a catering you know, and we have to find out, you know, if, if I was running the show, you know, or you were running it, and I'm sure you would have done the same if your bid got up with, with that and that. You would have looked at what do the fans want? What, what do we need to do? And one of the thing is we, that that thing that's out on the track needs to needs to provide a good contest, cheap re, cheap to repair, cheap to run. I don't like forget, a a, don't forget about the customer you already got. Right? There's a lot yeah. of people out there that are like having a beer and watching car racing and cooking a snag. Yeah. And I talk to them every day. They come here. They drive the experienced cars. They all wear the merch. Make sure you keep them before you start looking for the other ones. Yep. Um, keep them engaged. But uh, I think the big, you know, the, it's about, about the rivalries, about the drivers and race, the new owners of this thing. That's what there needs to be their focus. Not mm -hmm. so much about Gen 3 is, is getting eyeballs back to watching some good car racing. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah. All right, uh, let's, um, let's move on. Uh, like I said ra racing's been just full on at the moment and um moto gp just mate just crack there's a crowd up there just, to... just, just crack it once again isn't it yeah like i mean it's just it, just unbelievable amount of um amount of people uh the indonesia race on the weekend well big know, back there big motorcycling population up there in indonesia yeah, so they all yeah. ride scooters or small bikes <laughs> so how enthusiastic they're, they're they? heroes they're of moto gp oh. riders apparently they're worried about the gates people just storming the thing and and getting in there was a big, big concern. The amount of people that wanted to follow it, but that was Just massive. It was like the Beatles coming, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you talk about events <laughs> and how, how how important popular events are to race categories. Yeah. And there's a classic example. I mean, it just taking that to a market with the, that are, you know, just live and breathe motorcycles. Yeah, yeah. It was huge. Good to see. So it was a good call. And I've got to tell you, I mean, uh, how um. How out of control! Like I, I, I don't know how this guy just keeps, Mark has. just keeps. He can't back. keep doing that, can he? Uh, well, well, you you look at it. I mean, it, it's like. I mean, these guys are superhuman anyway. You know, we're big fans of, of yeah. you know, soccer racing, and and and. But I mean, how can you keep doing that? And I and I believe his blurry visions come back again. You know, it, it must get to a point where you go, Phew. yeah. You know, do do I start thinking about? 
Well, especially get, keep them whacked in the head. Oh, like. well, well, what's it going to do long term? I mean, I mean, it, it's it's serious speeds, serious damage. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just ridiculous, mate. I mean, it, it, how do you, how do you come back from that? Oh, we're we'll about to find out. Aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But he'll give it a crack. Yeah, they're just amazing. Or he might have to put the cue in the rack. But they're just amazing athletes. I, I just, I just, the more the more I watch it, the racing's been incredible. I mean, this year, I, I mean, there's a category that's got it right with their regulations and 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 i like the way they're quick to react they've just come out now and banned the front ride height adjustments now they've just come out and said no nah, enough of this they've got the rear ones you know you see them on the start lines point, where they lower they, down. they do come out and just draw a line in the sand it's like it's like track limits in moto gp yep are enforced yes you go over you're done yeah in formula one it's Depends who the steward is Just, that day or what, whatever, you know. They, they, let, let, <laughs> they let a lot go Yeah. on the weekend in Bahrain in F1. I saw a couple and went, oh, he's going to get his time deleted. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. No, no, you're right. I, I reckon that's this, one of the single biggest successes in MotoGP is, there, is, is how they react to rule changes. Whatever is going to give too much of an advantage to a team or not good for the sport, bang. So they've come out and banned these front ride height adjustments. Good. Bang, you're out. Right, like no more. This is no good. Um, they, they, and and it's it's. I believe still it's the best motorsport category in the world. Is is MotoGP? Hundred percent by far because of the riders, riders' commitment, the riders' personality, the racing, everything that goes with it. it it's just it's just action packed from start to beginning. So, um, and the F1s. Uh, mate, there's there's one guy here, and and I. I've got it's a, pretty cool. Uh, huh? <laughs> mate, and and I've got a, I've got a bit of a, a, a personal you know connection here because I was good mates with Yan and still are Yan Magnuson. Yeah, come, remember and, you come and drove for us that time? Yeah, yeah, and 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 like <laughs> jumped in and went, didn't you? Yeah, I mean they're just he's a good guy, and and I remember a couple of years ago um, uh, we were texting each other, and uh, this is Yan, and, and he said, and we were talking about. Kevin and he said Kevin is probably more I mean Yam was a serious steerer right he Didn't was a serious yeah that and that's exactly <laughs> what he said he said the commitment he right. said he said I wasn't committed right where Kevin is better than me in the car and he's committed he's just focused you know I I'm the prize the whole time dead set commitment to it so he said that's the difference and I, and I think you see it here that He's got the opportunity again. You know what? I'm going to grab this. <laughs> yeah, amazing. But who would have thought that you'd need Putin to invade Ukraine for Kevin Magnuson to get a Formula yeah, One? Oh, no. How could you write that story? <laughs> Tough way to hey? do it. <laughs> Tough way to but do it. But like. he's sitting in America. He's at Sebring or something. They ring up and said, "Can you come over and drive the house?" And what he about? Do, and he just gets in it and smokes them. And what? A, what? And unbelievable. And what about old mate that got flung? Yeah. Yeah. Which rightly so too, to be honest. And. Uh, so he get he gets flung. Imagine him watching that race and going, oh, I think they've the got probably more troubles, mate, huh? <laughs> with the sanctions that are, that are going to happen. Yeah, so exactly right. They've um, got some serious troubles. A, a really a really good story, and 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 again we we talk about personalities. How good was it to see that Gunter Steiner on there as well? Like you know he the guy team manager for for Haas. Yeah. You know he's such a character, and I didn't know. I thought he was half a deal. But then when I saw the first and second, uh, the last first and second season of Drive to Survive, got to know his personality. Got to know, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 that pro, that I think that show has really showed how the you were talking about personalities behind the sport, not only the drivers, but the team managers, the team owners. You know, all of a sudden there's differing opinions like Toto Wolf. Oh, he's a mongrel. Oh no, he's a genius. You know, and. And uh, you know, just all those sort of things. Like, and th and that's what makes it. That's what gets. And F1 popularity is off the scale. Off the scales, and and that was before the racing was good. Yep. Now with the new car, it looks like the racing's going to be better. There's different people up there. Yeah, but it was a yeah. two-horse race. Now it's not. So and everything was saying about this. Uh, what we said earlier about Gen Three. Yeah. There's an example. There's an example of a category going. You know what? We've just engineered ourselves in the space here. <laughs> We've got to stop this. We're going to bring it back, right, and and make a car that works properly. And, and actually, I'll, I'll show you, dude. I'll show you something that I I, I put together here. You're like this because you're okay. You're technical, right? Is the new floor? So there's 
because a, a couple of people asked me, well, what, what's the major difference in a Formula One car? Yes, they've dialed down the front wing, definitely the rear wing has got a lot simpler, but the floor is the biggest uh, difference between the two. So you see the 2021 yep. car is basically just a flat floor. Got the plank. There's a plank in the middle, a skim. So they relied. They're going over the car. So much on the wings. Yep. Everything over the side pods, everything on top of the floor produced a downforce. But when you, when you get that, it, it disturbs the air out the back of the car at a flatter rate, at a flatter angle, and further out. So when you say dirty air, get the wake, drivers, you're getting the wake and you can't, that's why the cars couldn't follow. Because the, the stream, the jet stream was further down, further longer and a lot lower down. Now they've taken all the downforce off from the floor up, taken all the downforce off the wings. Got some ground effect there. Put it to the top, so you see the top 2022 car, yeah. and it's a lot more intricate. Um, you'll see the diffuser at the back kick up, well now that's where they get their grip from. So when you look at lap times, they're, they're not too dissim dissimilar at the moment. Like they're still pretty fast. Their corner speeds are still very high because they produce it with the floor now, that kick floor and the wake, the wake actually comes up and straight up. So that means the car can get closer before it gets in the disturbed air. You, you probably almost doubled how, how close, much closer you can get to it. So that's the difference between right. the two. So when, when you look at it, I mean, it, it's a dramatic difference. But there's a category that went, did their homework with it, saying, look, we don't want the cars to be too much slower. You know, we, we still want them to physically look faster a corner. So how do we do that? Keep the pace of the car, keep the grip so they're, they're far, but still produce good racing that cars can follow closely. And that's what they come up with. So obviously they got a lot of smart people behind oh, the scenes. Huge <laughs> resources and huge man, resources it turned yeah. out right. And yeah. the parallel is also NASCAR. They went to a flat floor too, yes. and, and, and a and a diffuser at the back, so they could get less air over the top of the car and yeah, more yeah. air under the bottom and get more passing. And that seems to have... and how, how good's that? Yeah. Hey, just a quick one. They're back back pedalling a bit because yep. you got on the word NASCAR. Could you use a NASCAR? Would that, would that have been an option? I know we've spoken to it before, but I, 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 I still I look at it. Would, would have, have been, been an option? And then, now you've seen it race. Now I've seen it race, and I can't wait to see it on the road courses. It's a heavy car. Um, you know, they're designed to hit walls at 200 mile an hour, so you could use a modified version of that. And then something that's come out recently is Hendrick and NASCAR are taking a modified version of next gen and going to race it at Le Mans. Really? So they're going to have to make the doors open. Yeah. Um, it's going to do a 24 hour race. It's going to have driver changes. It, to me, it looks like, and it's going to have hybrid utilization. It's already, already equipped to do that. To me, it looks like NASCAR and, and the manufacturers there are looking like maybe this could be a new world, world formula because. Sell it to other countries. Why would you take a NASCAR to Le Mans? It's yeah, not a, it yeah, there's got to be more to it than just yeah, a, just yeah, a feel yeah. good thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're modifying it it's like okay Jeez, how here, here's a car that you can race on dirt you can race on ovals you can race it in the coliseum you can race it on road courses now you can go to Le Mans with the thing it's already got manufacturer involvement they've already got hybrid technology they're quite to cheap aren't they i think they're about 400 grand from, yeah, yeah. from what i understand Yep. The, the thing that their engine package is still quite quite expensive because they still run run those motors, yep. those high end motors. But yeah, it, it could have been a good option for you. Jeez, how good! The, straight away, I think of that sort of thing, and then I'm thinking Australia versus USA races. Like they bring a team over here, you know, yep. take a team from here over there. All of a sudden, you can race and start racing in different countries with the same cars, you know, yeah, and, and, and and you get that. I think that could have been, and we were on the assumption that you needed a, a car designed for our Australian tracks that can jump curbs and do all that sort of stuff. But man, if they've, it might have been easy to adapt something that had, that had already. But watch that closely. What happens with that car at Le Mans? Well, that's, look, looking that's, at that's looking, a, looking that's at the game changer for me. Looking at the racing, they've got it. It's been great. They've got hasn't it right. It? Oh, crowds have come back, and, and, they, and, and, and they were taking a dip. Drivers, are, yeah. drivers are, are working behind the cars. Some of the midfield yeah. teams have come up. Sure, the, the cream's always rising, but the biggest one in the NASCAR, and we're diverging a bit, is the established drive. So a lot of the established drivers are having trouble. They've got a lot of muscle memory. They, they're looking for something in the car that they haven't got. 
Yeah. And you've seen a lot of first time winners, you know, someone like Chase Briscoe yep. come in, you know, he's, he's new to the sport in, in cup racing and he's, he's doing well with the car. So maybe that'll happen with Gen 3 a bit yeah, too. Sure. It'll mix yeah, it up yeah. a bit. No, that's right. No, it's, uh, yeah. it's interesting. Hey, um, I want to I want to get for our next part of the show, which we're we're about to head out on the track. Um, I want to get a, a little bit serious here, and it's something you're I know you're very passionate about, and, and it's a, a very very serious. So we're we're going to get Captain Safety on you here, everyone. But it's a serious issue, and, and something you've been trying to address ever since you've had Norwell Motorplex here, trying to get it through into governments and that this should be high on the priority list is road safety. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and you've, you've run uh, your road and you've really ramped it up just recently uh, with your defensive driving courses, L-plate courses, P-plater courses, um, which has been working unbelievable. I put my two daughters through here and they come away and went, Jesus, how good was that? Like, like the stuff there I didn't even know. You know, things I don't teach you when you're just going for your L's or your P's. Yeah, for sure. Um, practical, in a practical situation and uh, defensive situation as well. So now I've got on to Russell White, who's the go-to guru. All he the is, networks yep. go to him, uh, a friendly here at Norwell. And he, he sent me down some stats and uh, the current figure of road deaths, um, and this was just during the month of February, the current figure is 70% higher, 70% higher than the previous year. Uh, during the 12 months ended February 2022, there was 1,137 road deaths nationally, right? That's 2.3% uh, up from the peering ended 2021. Uh, so a couple of the other stats which really shook me a bit was in land, land transport accidents, so that's across the board of, of any vehicle yep. on, on the road, um, is the age group including as the leading cause of death for one to 14 year olds is land transport accidents. It's a leading cause of death for, for youth. So that, that obviously one to 14 is passengers. Passengers and cars. Passengers yeah. and cars or, or related to you know, or anything related to an accident as yep. well. Um, for males, the greatest number of deaths among those aged 15 to 29, so this is year, year in, is 332 deaths. So that's 15 to 29 age group. And for females, it's 20 to 24 at 42 deaths. You know, it's just, it's just staggering figures. And those figures just showed you youth in the male and female. It's also shows uh, lead, you. leading cause of death. Well, so. it also shows you that speed cameras and non and entrapment and fining people is not fixing the problem. Yeah, no. it, it, and everywhere else in government they want to educate you, except yeah. for driving a car. They think you, you don't need to be educated. It just yeah. blows my mind that we build universities and you know we teach people how to swim. It's a life school, life skill. Sorry. But we don't teach people how to drive properly, and um, yeah, and the, the biggest thing that that cars now have a lot of safety technology in it, mm. and what we do here with our courses, we we don't teach people how to drive better. We teach them about what their car does, mm. and in doing so, they become better drivers. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's yeah. pretty simple. And and that's the thing I, I want to jump out on the track now. Yep. Say, I, I want to get more more into this as we go on this year with the shows and actually dedicated show to this and get your instructors and get Russell White down here and really do a, a show dedicated to it. But I just want to touch on a couple of things. So I want to jump out on the track yep. and, and get you to show me some of the features or misconceptions, advantages and misconceptions of some of the autonomous or, or, or driving aids that are on cars that people don't know about. And that's one of the things you really drum into them, isn't it? When, when you come out here, is things like, simple things like ABS, how many people still don't know what it is and how it operates? Yeah, they don't know what it is. And um, as technology comes into car, the, the curriculum, how you drive a car changes. Hmm. But you know, the, the driving test is stuck back in 1970. 
that hasn't moved with the technology in cars. So um, that that is the big gap, and that's where education will, will, will bring the, the road to it. I mean, this is a very arguable because there'll be people out there, any of the experts that that will, will argue things that we say about here, but you see it on the front line, and, and you've seen it here for years, and, 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 you, and there's, no better, there's no better tool than practical. Yeah, well, you, you, I relate it back to swimming, right? It's a life skill to learn how to swim. You can't learn how to swim online. You've got to get wet, you know? Yeah. And then you'd be, you, know, you look at something like surf life saving, they keep, getting better and better skills to get better and better people at it to eventually you've got someone that good at it that can save someone else or teach them how to do it. And driving should be no different. Yeah. It should be no different at all. And things change as well. Things, things change, change. Things change. And because change. Yeah. we're involved in, in motorsport, we see how things change a lot, lot quicker. So there's a lot of parallels that you can mm -hmm. take from motorsport into transport to keep things safe. For sure. But, but the best thing to do is separate the two. One's a sport and one's transport, but the, the information sharing, there's a lot there so you right. can do. All right, well, let's get out. Don't you know, stay around, stick around. This is, and, and if you've got young kids with you sitting in the house right now, grab them by the arm, sit them down next year and have a look at this. It's really interesting and definitely worthwhile. So let's get on the track. Okay. Okay, dude, what do you got me doing first? Well, it's pretty simple, mate. Number one, featuring almost all cars now is ABS, yep. anti-lock braking system. Yep. SS Commodore VE, this would have come out with it standard. Yep. It's been disabled on this car. So I'm gonna take you back to your, <laughs> your roots when you were driving around in your HQ panel van. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> with, yeah. Probably without the passengers. Back to your roots in your HQ panel van. <laughs> yeah, yeah, panel yeah. Panel van. Yep. Bit of a pun there, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, gotcha, all right. Uh, so, right, yep. it's got no ABS, so what's gonna happen is the wheels are going to lock. You're not yep. going to have any steering. Yeah. And we'll see the front and rear wheels probably lock up. You'll probably hit the very thing you're trying to avoid. Yep. You being a bit of a skillful race driver, we'll know how to modulate the brake pedal, but I don't want you to do that. Just hit it as hard as I can. Hit it hard as you can, like you would in an emergency, and let's see what happens. Okay. All right. All right. Done. 70 k's on the markers. 70 k's we'll on the markers. We'll see where you end up. Yep. I reckon you'll leave the road. Oh no, I reckon I'll pull up before it. All right. Okay. Here he comes, he's building speed, running at about 70. Smash the brake pedal now. Oh, 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 <laughs> so pretty Bloody dramatic hell. demonstration there. You saw the front wheels lock, you actually saw Russ try and turn a bit. The car just kept going straight ahead. Some black marks left on the road. You don't see that anymore. Pretty dramatic demonstration. Holy! I saw you couldn't help yourself there. You got a bit of brake modulation I, I, going on at the end. Well, I did because I didn't think I was, <laughs> was going to stop. I thought I was going to end up in the shed. Yeah, mate. This is the first time in I, I don't know how many decades that I've driven a car without ABS. It's it, a good point, right? First thing you know, you need to know when you ever get in a car. Do you have ABS or don't you have ABS? So correct. What we see here, you know, different kids if they're learning to drive in an older car without ABS. Yeah. It's a different driving technique. You, you can't do an emergency stop like that. That's the old school pump the pedal. Yeah. And that, and that, hey, trust me, that wasn't hammed up. That was just in, hard on the brake, and I couldn't believe it actually took off. She took off. As soon as those, I must have, must have locked up all the wheels. Yeah, all, 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 all four wheels were locked. As soon as they locked, the car actually gained speed. It did. It actually gained momentum. Yeah, a little so. bit of wet weather too, which you see on a roundabout or something and someone wow. approaches that too quickly. That's really, it's actually really, really surprising. Yeah. Really, really caught me out. Like, so I reckon modern car now with ABS, let's show what happens. We're gonna do that? Okay, yeah. let's swap over. Good all job, right. Russ. Thanks, Still mate. Still got it, mate. <laughs> Still doing all these own stunts. This is worth looking at, right? Because you don't see this anymore. Right, look at the rubber on the road. Yep. And old days you used to see two black marks and then a, a bent, a crashed over telephone pole or yeah, a tree. Yeah, yeah. We don't see that anymore. You just because see, it, because it, you haven't got the black marks. Haven't got the black marks. You just see a car spray, sprayed everywhere and you wonder why it happened. It fairly went out of control. Like, yeah. It was, it was actually, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, uh, latest Mazda MX-30, loaded with safety features. One of those is ABS, let's see how that works. Here comes Russ, same speed, same everything. Hit it, mate. 
pretty pretty good demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? That that is night and day. I mean, that was exactly the same speed. That was 70 kilometres an hour on the dot. Uh, hard on the ABS. Uh, I felt the pulsation. You know, like it's interesting know. on that pulsation. Yep. So what we find here, when the ABS is working, which is basically releasing brake pressure, the computer's doing it, so the wheels don't lock. That's what we learn when we're racing cars. We, yeah, we yeah. trail brake, so yeah. we're modulating the brake pressure. Yeah. The computer's doing it, but look where you stopped. But the, the byproduct of that is some, some feedback through the brake pedal. Yep. And we find about 60% of the young people that come here, when they first feel the brake pedal pulsate, they think something's gone wrong and they come off the brake. Okay. Where, as you know, with the ABS system, keep the pressure on, let the computer do its work, and look where you stopped. Yeah, I, I'll tell you one thing as well. Um, well my, I, I put my two daughters through this course, yeah. and what they said to me is, that, oh, when we, when we first hit the brakes for the first time, we didn't hit it hard enough. That's you know, right. they sort of put probably 50% brake pressure. Well, they've been taught to do that, to pass the driving test, to give the instructor a smooth ride, you know. Yeah, yeah. But when an emergency situation comes, you need to know how the emergency systems work. It's like when you get on an aeroplane, they teach you how to open the door in case there's a fire. If you're in the exit yeah. row, you <laughs> yeah. just bought the car and no one's taught you what to do in, no. in an emergency. Yeah. Just... Well, that's what they said. They said, <laughs> oh, we didn't realise you could push it that hard. I said, you push it as hard as you can. Okay. So this, there's, there's another secondary effect we can do with that. Yep. Because the wheels are still turning, we're going to have steering. Okay. So... Look, we need to demonstrate that now. Yeah, okay. But I reckon because we did it so graphically there with the yep, other yep, car, yep, yep. I'm just going to pull out on you. What, in the Commodore? Yep. Yeah. And I reckon you'll be able to turn and go around the corner. You got a lot of trust in me and the ABS. Yeah. All right. Okay, so well, I'm, go, I'm going to fly down here at 70 k's. 70 k's. I'll be yep. in the Commodore like I've just run a red light. Yeah. And you'll be able to turn and brake. <laughs> what, what could go well Southport Mazda I hope she's insured <laughs> serious <laughs> alright right. yeah 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 let's do it yeah okay so you're just going to pull straight out yep okay and I'll be in the wet alright yep okay and steer around under hard braking yep so and keep the brakes on and go around okay alright ABS will stop you but you, you also can turn right yep. so okay avoid, we'll avoid the thing you're trying to just hit just flash your lights when you're ready right there. Pretty good, eh? <laughs> That's a bit daunting. Well, you would have had no chance with that ABS, would you? Uh, not at all. No, if I was in, if I was in that car, just would have sailed straight into the side. But honestly, I had that much steering, even in the wet, that it felt like I was in the dry. I could actually steer around, no problems. I had to yeah, use a bit of lock. Steer around and keep going. Or no if problems. there's another car parked in front of you, stop. You can still continue to the left. Yep, exactly right. And just know your options. Which is another whole segment. It's, uh, where do you learn that? It's like, incredible. That's the sort of stuff, that's the sort of stuff you need to know. <laughs> yeah, well, the, te the technology is in the car and no one's taught to use it. And I relate it back to the only thing that we had as a safety feature years ago was a handbrake. Yep. Right? You put it on when you're on the hill, you used it for a hill start, you stopped your car rolling around, rolling away from it, and it was part of the driving curriculum. Yep, yep. That, even that's not there anymore, so how you can pass a driving test and know how to drive a car when you haven't been trained on type, like in any other industry, yeah, aviation yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever, it just wouldn't fly. And and the thing is, if you're not, if you don't know, say you're a parent and you don't know how all the autonomous features like ABS braking and all the safety features of the modern day car work, how can you teach your kids that? No, because the uh -uh. curriculum's changed. When they no. learned to drive it was in an XD Falcon or something where, you know, you, you didn't trial brake, you, you made sure you braked in a straight line, yep. you, you pumped the brake pedal, yep. all that stuff is different. So, you know, we're, when we're teaching people to drive, we're not teaching them to drive fast, we're, we're just showing them that the features of the car, which yep. will yep. save them. And, and that's why they put the features in the car for those particular reasons, but no one shows them how to use it. Well, <laughs> if you walk onto a, a job site or a mine site, you've got to be trained how to use every tool there before they'll let you go to work. Yep. 
and we just shove people in the cars every day without training them. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Here's how to sync your phone and see you later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the other one that a lot of cars, even some of the base models have, is stability control. Yes. A lot of people I, I speak to don't watch stability control. Again, it's, it's a good one. And basically, if the car gets your on it, the, it's going to take throttle out and it's going yep. to apply brakes on the different wheels to straighten the car back up. Yep. It's pretty subtle on, on really good cars. It's pretty subtle. On some of the more basic cars, it's a bit more intrusive. But again, Russ, the thing to know is when it's coming on. If that's coming on, that's a warning to you that you're going too fast and you better bring the car back under control. Is that something we can demonstrate around yeah, here? I reckon we can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's another one, like the pulsing brake pedal. Yeah. You should feel the brakes coming on and the power coming out of the so car. So this will be coming through the steering and the feel of the car. You'll feel it. So again, it's a feel thing. It's a feel thing, and unless someone's told you what it is, you, you might think there's something wrong with your car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's jump in. Right on. You jump in with me and we'll okay. find out how to work. All right, dude, so this, on the skid pan, so we're going to have a look at yeah, how ESC operates. ESC, stability control, ex yep. electronic stability control. Yep. And the water's on to bring the grip level down, so it'll probably halve. So yep. our 40 would okay. be probably 80 on the main road. Right, around okay. Around the corner. Yep. But the water's on, which is if it's rained. Yep. And this is just a wet, this is a roundabout. This is a wet, roundabout, yeah. And it's rained. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Where half half the crashes on the road seem to happen is on a roundabout, isn't it? Yeah. People barrel in too fast. Yep. All right, so so to get it right, ESC is, will straighten the car if the car gets into a slide or and even pulls power out. Yeah, the first thing it's going to do is realise that you're going too fast for the corner. It yep. senses that the car's losing grip. Yep. I think the first thing you'll notice with this car, it's going to pull a bit of power out. Okay. Well, stop you having the slide. If you till, still continue to slide, it'll start applying okay. brakes to straighten the car well, up. Let's try that first. So I'll just go overboard with the power. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's that's on now. Let's pull it out there now, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm flat. I'm You're flat. Flat. I'm flat. And, and it's pulled the power out. Twenty percent throttle. Yeah. And yeah. So that was flat. So, so the important thing to think about there is it's not a parachute. It's not there to save you and just drive automatically. It's it, it'll catch you having a smaller accident. accident yeah. If you s continue to drive flat, you're just going to take the car further well, down the road and have a bigger accident. Well, that's what was happening. <laughs> I was getting further and further out. If I kept going, I would have gone to the grass. Grass, right? Yeah, yeah. So you still got to. So when we teach people about this stuff, it's teach them. To, hey, that's activating. You're driving the car wrong, fix your driving, and then continue on. Continue your on, yeah. Continue yeah, okay. on. It's a warning sign. It's to be alert, it's to switch you on. Yeah. yeah. Instead of having a crash, it's warned you that you're about to have a crash. Yeah. Shine up. Shine up. Stop being stupid, and yeah. then, yeah, go, get on with it. It's no. not there to mask all your bad driving habits. <laughs> and and that, that is what I find. I find people jump in and they read the, they glance over the brochure and go, Oh, well, that's all. I can just press on and this thing will save me no matter what. Negative. Negative. <laughs> yes, to it. <laughs> and that's what you see on the road. You drive down the road and you see a car and it's just sprayed everywhere and you go, how the hell did that happen? Yeah. yeah. Right? So yeah. it's, and it's, and it actually, the accident happens at a high speed. Right. Right. Because they think it's going to save them. Yeah. They haven't recognised it's about to go wrong. Yeah, and yeah. It yeah. happens at a high speed. So the other, the other part of it, so pull the throttle out to stop you from sliding. Now, when the car gets loose, it also can do when it things to, to your, yeah. yeah to, it, it does things to straighten it up. Yeah, it? it uses brake application right. on the different wheels. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll get up the speed, and I'll see if I can get that to. Yeah, we'll go for a tighter radius. Yeah, you'll feel it because you're highly tuned to what the car. Yeah, what doing. the car. Yeah, I've yeah. got to stop trying to react for it, you know. So. All right. Okay. Oh, I just felt it then. Like yeah. it. So that went. I think it put the left hand inside yeah. brake on. And a right and a left so front, and it pulled, I, it pulled the car straight. I tried not to correct for it because the trouble is, muscle memory comes in. I tried to correct, so I'm trying not to correct for it and just let it go round on its own. So I won't correct, I'll just keep it. It's pulling this right, yeah. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, yeah. And now. That normally would have spun straight just around. Spun, spun straight so out. I didn't correct for it. I kept the wheel there, and it just collected it up itself. But so. again, if you don't recognise it, 
that allow you to keep gaining speed and have a bigger yeah. accident. Yeah. So, so like, if I just barrel into it, so I've gone in, gone in the roundabout too fast, so the best thing I can do is just get out, get out of the throttle, yep. and then it's just pulled it back again. Yeah. If you feel, so just come if you out. feel those, those driver aids coming on, yep. slow the car down with your yeah, right yeah, foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one thing I picked up with this is uh, if you can like to highlight it from the swerve test that we did in the wet yeah you can still like even at this sort of going through a roundabout the abs in conjunction with stability control you can still jump on the brake and save it can't you yep you might do an emergency stop so you there. go and so if you hit it here look at that yep that's one thing i noticed and like, someone come i didn't there. correct so someone's pulled out of the roundabout yeah you got a you got a four-way roundabout someone's pulled out i can hit it it didn't skid out like didn't, it, it normally the car would have gone Doof. if i was in a car with nine abs nine, i yeah. just would have spun off and gone straight into it you think you had a rock on a piece of string and you're swinging it around where you yeah. let go of it that's where it's going to go that's where it's going to go right but with abs good. and ac you got options oh, i just do it i just do it again because that really spun me out that how easily how easily it does it like you actually collected it up and we're doing nearly 50 kilometers an hour so hard on the brakes look i i don't reckon i went a foot out of out of bounds no you still kept in your lane kept all in the lane that's in my lane yeah. and it stopped and no problems and the next part of that is you do have options can you turn left can you turn right yep, well yep. you need that's where your mirrors come into it is there someone beside me yep right yeah so, so check <laughs> uh, obviously with the things we're showing like the swerving you got to have clear a clear, clear lane or clear road lane. you can't go into the opposite yeah, traffic or anything like that. So, you, yeah right? exactly right yeah so so just let me try one more with winding the lock on as well as i'm doing the so back up the 50 kilometers an hour which is reasonable for going around a, so i hit the brake and then wind the lock on look at that <laughs> still within the lane didn't get under steer and didn't spin out yeah and basically Not, you still that, have that's, effective, four, that's four lock you still have affected controls in an emergency situation yeah 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 it's uh it's good <laughs> it's, it's good oh, i like you know even for someone like me that you know but the, mate, you go oh, to i Europe should believe it, i know some what i'm doing scandinavian countries germany that they teach you this teach it yeah yeah it, it's it's a lot of work to get your license yeah 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 oh well all right, I, I'll tell you what, after, after experiencing all that dude, we've got to do a dedicated show. We'll get the Russell Whites of the world, uh, Robbo, chief instructor here. I can tell you what, let's go a step further. Let's get a couple of real rookie teenage a P plater yeah. and L plater. Let's bring them down here and let's do some real graphic stuff as well. And one thing I really want to get into is a whole mobile phone, thinking people can still drive and use their mobile phone. Bad one, isn't it? I, I oh, got to remind myself every day. It's just, it, it's, it's a it, bad one. Mate, it's just all bad. And I'm, I'm thinking that there's a little test I like to do there. We might have to get onto our banger car supplier because we might do some damage. Todd Bonless, we'll yep. be calling him. Yeah, yeah. Raw Metal Corp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got to got to get a couple of cars down here, so we're dedicated a show to that because after experiencing that, it's worthwhile. Like like there's, to me, it's a no-brainer that practical tests like this have to be mandatory. And just mate, it really annoys me that the federal and state governments don't allocate more towards this. Well, it's education, Russ, and I've said it before, but we educate that. The way to fix everything is to educate people except for driving. It's just ridiculous. And government thinks that technology is going to save them and bringing speed limits down is going to save them. But if people don't know how to use the technology, it's useless. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is, we've got a federal election going up, right? So I flick on the news every night. There's $15, $15 million towards Save the Reef. You know, 10 million for something else, 5 million to save the yellow breasted cocksucker, or I don't know, whatever, whatever it may be, you know. And important and, issues to the people that are there, but this is oh, something everyone but, does every day, mate. It's and not, uh, over 1,100 plus people die a year. Like, it's not a small number. Everyone is in a car, it's not a boutique industry and a yeah. minor industry. <laughs> Everyone's in a car every day of their life, unless they're, you know, public transport in a city. Mm. But as you said, a lot of those accidents are on, on the thing you let out are, are, are pedestrians getting hit by cars. So as, exactly. even if you don't yeah, own, yeah. own a car, teaching someone to drive it probably is probably going to stop you getting bowled over. Yeah, for sure. 
for sure. Very, very, it's, it's an important thing. And like I said, if, um, if you've got teenage drivers or even yourself, I encourage you to watch, watch this, watch this with them, this part of the episode, because it is important and uh, uh, it's something that's not talked about enough. We just take it for granted. We take these things too much for granted, you know, these, these vehicles. So we've got to get into it more. Mate, great to have our partners on board, Super Cheap Auto. Pretty good, sure. eh? Yeah. Yes. They wouldn't happen to be stocking you on you in Force of Boat Watch, would they? Oh, do you? I'm, I'm so glad you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Just so happens. <laughs> Is this a Darlene Hut? <laughs> Look, awesome, at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. In case you haven't seen it online, let's see Enforcer. And where, where can I get it, Russ? Hi. Get it online? Mate, you can get it online at enforcerproducts.com.au. <laughs> this, is, this is very direct. Oh, <laughs> this is not it. cheesy at all, is it? Talk about product placement. Uh, but soon to be available in super cheap auto stores. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So mate. there you go. No, it's been a good little project. Great feedback so far, too, from enthusiasts as well. It says marine wash, but I'll tell you what, the stuff that's in there is so good a lot better than a lot of the other car wash it's got, got double the mixtures and waxes idea, and everything yeah the mazda's a little bit dirty from being on the skid pan so you should go wash it and show me how good that is <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking exactly the same thing <laughs> uh yeah okay yeah hey, mate, hey, mate i tell you after i wash it on this you won't know it it'll look like a new mazda okay yeah so uh yeah so get on board buy that it'll do me a favor keeps me in new clothes good and so. also thanks to southport mazda Yes, for sure. Cars for us, yeah, yeah. Which uh, allows us to do our team driver training program here. Yeah, well, I bought a car off of them because of this training. You did? Yep, Jazz yeah. came out and drove this very car. So, segueing to that, so. if you're looking for a car for your team driver, make sure it's got ABS, make sure yes. it's got ASC and airbags. That's what you want to. That's what you want to go for. Maybe we should do a show on that too, some stage. That's what we need to do. Uh, Good. Best value car you can buy. Yeah, for your first time driver, and we do it because not everyone we, can afford a new car. You we know? do it. We do a category. We do. Yeah, yeah. Like sub twenty. Yeah. Twenty to thirty. Yeah. Thirty and over. You can get a car for, you know, under ten grand. It has all those features. Yeah. So yeah. that's very true. Let's let's find them. Yeah. Okay. We might do a bit of a rove around a car park. Right. Car, on. car yard. Good Some idea. Some used car yard. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've got a good used car yard around South East Queensland, give us a yell. There's got plenty of different cars and we'll yeah. come and visit you. Especially if you're interested in buying any Enforcer yeah. product. Yeah, exactly right. As you should. <laughs> okay. Good one, okay, that's enough, that's enough vlogging the product. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time. See ya.